Minnesota, they devoted quite a bit of space at the rec center for handball because the University of Minnesota has a huge handball community. I'm with Gary Rohr, who's on the Hall of Fame here in Minnesota. Thank you for joining me. Thank you. Let's take me a little bit through this. The Hall of Fame here, quite a big deal. You've got all the pictures on the wall. You've got a, a chest full of memorabilia. Yes, we've uh, been very fortunate. Our Handball Hall of Fame was started in 1993, and for many years it was at the Minneapolis Athletic Club. Then it was moved for a period of time, and now, thanks to Jim Terman, who, is the, uh, who was the head of the University of Minnesota Recreation Department at the time, he helped us put this wall of fame together and got the uh, architects and a uh, bunch of people involved to make the display that you see here. Not just walls here with the Hall of Fame, but also the importance of spreading handball as a sport to live longer, to play, and to know that it's a lifelong sport. That's right, and that's where the University of Minnesota has gotten uh, a special person here, Vin Chung, to actually uh, wind up running the court sports. He's a court sport director, and because of that, he's promoting the handball through the university and through the collegiates, and also, he's dedicated a lot of time and effort to, to promoting handball in our local youth community. So here we're showing the history of handball, some Egypt pictures, and I love this one of Abe Lincoln. Tell me a little bit about this one. Well, I'm not the historian, but we did find some pictures of handball being used, uh, promoted and played all the way back into the before time before Christ as one wall outdoor and Abe Lincoln is shown in this photo on Ace Handball magazine from USHA as playing it appears as an outdoor one wall court uh, sport and I'm, I know that that was then moved to New York New York has been the greatest hotbed for one wall handball and actually probably more handball players started in there in New York than anywhere that then it moved to uh, uh, firehouses and firehouses across the United States, San Francisco, New York, Chicago, Detroit, all over the firehouses uh, had handball courts so that the guys could play handball when they weren't fighting fires. And many national champions came out of that uh, program as well. And it really does keep you in shape. We also have the history here, we're showing the Hall of Fame, but of the, the balls. I mean, you didn't just always start with the same ball that you always use. Using the pressurized containers is great. But tell me about some of the older ones that we see here. Spalding, even. You don't see Spalding as much anymore in the handball world. No, actually, the very first ball in the can, the biggest can, is a seamless 555 ball. And I'm not sure what year that started, but it was a seamless rubber company, I believe, in Ohio. And it was the one that I started playing with back in the 50s, so I know it's been around forever. Then it moved to a pressurized ball of various shapes and sizes, and now currently it's in a one ball can, still pressurized to maintain the liveliness of the ball. So there's been several manufacturers over the years that have gotten involved. Primarily the USHA is the one that has the ball going now. The pros are also playing with a different handball that's more played by the pros and not so much played by the average handball player. And seeing this wall, it just shows how proud the Minnesota community is of their handball. We see many people up here on this wall. Anna Engel being the latest inductee. She's a phenomenal women's player, also on the National Hall of Fame. Yes, that's right. We're so happy that Anna was able to get into the National Handball Hall of Fame. She's been on our State Hall of Fame here for several years. And I think we have about four or five people on this wall that are in the National Handball Hall of Fame as well as our own Handball Hall of Fame. There you said Jim Terman who helped build this facility or create it here as well as an important one to notice. I want to check out your picture though, Gary. Let's see where you're at. Holding a big old trophy over there, it looks like. Yeah, I guess it is. I don't know exactly when that was taken, but uh, yeah, I'm holding a trophy. I've been fortunate enough to have been playing for over 60 years and I've won a lot of various titles and it's been a great game for me. I've enjoyed it so much and kept in shape and still playing pretty good for an old guy. You know what a family sport this is as well because next to you is John Nett. We know Andy Nett does these rounds as well, still plays on the Race for Eight Tour. So it's great to see the family and the generations getting older with the sport. Yeah, that's been the main way for years that uh, fathers would take their sons in to teach them how to play and or they would mentor the young kids in a YMCA uh, where the YMCA's 
are, were really strong was back in the 50s and the early 60s and into the 70s. And now the YMCA's are kind of going by the boards as far as having courts, but the collegiate system is picking up the slack, and that's where we're so happy that we've got this facility and the people here from the University of Minnesota that are willing to put forth the time and effort to promote the game. Gary, thank you so much. You're very welcome. Thank you.